Greetings, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul with another fruit review. Today I'm going to review Paul Thompson's number seven. It's one of his unknown species, and I got this from his friend, this plant here. I got it from his friend, the late Leo Manuel. And you can see in his book, he describes this plant as number seven. It's horny, and it'll have one to two spines. Now, I've already had some fruit off of this plant. You can see it's brixed at a 19 and 8 tenths. Now, what I'm really excited to do is to compare to see if this is actually the same as Valdivia Roja, which was floating around around the same time period. So these are very, very similar, if not the same varieties. So you can see the two fruit here. It's not the best lighting, but they're very, very similar. So. Let's go give this a taste and see how we like it. As you can see here, it's weighing in at 30, almost 39 hundredths of a pound, and that it's a little bit different in color compared to some other varieties. It's a bit more orange. Now, I did want to mention that this variety has one of the most beautiful flowers, just like Valdivia Roja, which is another indication that they are very similar, if not the same variety. So let's go ahead and give this a cut open and let's see how it tastes. Now it is a red flesh variety and this is a Hylocerus ocamponis. And those tend to come from the Me uh, regions in Mexico. So I believe the history behind this plant is that it came from Valdivia Ranch. It is not related to Edgar Valdivia who created the Asunta line. So let's go ahead and see the brick score on this lovely beast and review this fruit. Now, I did forget to add the distilled water. There we go. And we're gonna set this to zero. There we go. And let's go ahead and see how this sweet this fruit is. Now again, you can see before that it has bricks. The same plant has bricks it. 19 and 8 tenths. So that's a sweet variety. Now, one thing I noticed about this is it's not as moist. There's, it's a bit more dense and it's not as juicy, I should say, as some of the other varieties I've eaten. Now this one's really low. Look at that, 13.5. So it might have needed some more time. It did change color a few days ago. So 13 and 5 tenths is a low score, but honestly, it doesn't matter how sweet this fruit is. I've had it close to 20, and it still doesn't taste excellent, I hate to say. Not bad, but the problem with number 7 and Valdivia Roja both, actually I really think these are the same, is that they're dense, that the flesh is really dense and kind of dry. And it tastes like vegetables. You know when you're little, or maybe you're like me when you're little, and your parents made you eat vegetables you didn't like? That's how I describe this fruit. But sweeter. I mean, it's still sweet. It's okay. I, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. I mean, it's better than most store-bought varieties of dragon fruit, in my humble opinion. But again, it's like eating your healthy vegetables. Eating your greens. I can't really finish this fruit when I eat it. So I may grow it for a few more years to evaluate it and just enjoy the, the flower or maybe use it in hybridizing. But if you're gonna own five dragon fruit or 10 dragon fruit varieties, do not own this one. There are so many better dragon fruit varieties in my opinion. So I, I hate to be rude to Paul Thompson's number seven or Valdivia Roja, you do have beautiful, they do have beautiful flowers, but again, it's like eating vegetables. So I don't want to eat any more of this. And again, I give it a five out of 10. So give it a, a like and a subscribe and we'll keep trying hopefully some better varieties. Let's go, let's try this one. I'm gonna do this one for our next episode, 4S, Paul Thompson's 4S. All right, have a wonderful day. Ugh. I'm done with this variety.